Gail Catron, and I am the manager of Carabo Fair Trade downtown East Lansing. Carabo opened five years ago uh, as a result of um, some local efforts, a church's local efforts, bringing back Nicaraguan pottery. When I saw what they were doing uh, by trying to help the artisans in Nicaragua earn a higher price, a higher wage for their beautiful handcrafted pottery, um, I then explored and learned more about what the fair trade movement was and realized that um, there's an organization called 10,000 Villages, um, many other very small organizations getting involved with helping third world artisans uh, get, make a, earn a higher wage for their handcrafted goods. And so it was fascinating to me. It was a way that I could live here in the East Lansing area um, and yet make a huge difference in the world globally. So. Doing business locally is cool because we are the fabric of the community. We offer different experiences to anyone who wants to be out and about shopping or browsing. Um, sure, you know, all of us pay our taxes to city government, we hire local employees, we pay taxes to the state of Michigan, all good things, but we're really more about providing that experience that you cannot get when you're at home pointing and clicking and buying online. Uh, we like to think of it as um, come into our store, um, hear our water whistles, or our singing bowls, smell our cinnamon tea bark boxes or our vetiver placemats which is a root woven into the fabric and taste our yummy chocolates too so we always do sampling um, it's that experience of shopping that we like to create how is fair trade similar to supporting a local economy here um, First of all, this fair trade store is involved with several local efforts, local community organizations that are trying to help globally. For instance, um, we have amongst us uh, Jackson Kaguri, who born and raised in Uganda, but he now runs the Nyaka AIDS Orphan Project. It's here, their head offices are here locally. Uh, what he's doing is building schools for the AIDS orphans in Uganda and most of these orphans live with grandmothers, not necessarily their own. The grandmothers make a line of baskets, they make handmade jewelry. Um, we help that organization by always positioning one spot in our store their merchandise and then whatever sells we donate 100% to the Nyaka AIDS orphan project. Uh, we have a couple other area churches that through mission work they've gotten involved um, globally and so they'll be fundraising for orphanages um, through a series of cards that are hand stitched. We'll say let us help you sell those cards and we'll donate again back to your orphanage. We often get approached for local charities that do fundraising. Can we donate an item to a silent auction? Yes, of course. Um, can we speak at an event and educate the community about fair trade, about artisans who take a nut and make jewelry? Um, whatever our educational piece is that we tell our customers every day in the store, we also take that on the road to events. We asked to participate in several alternative holiday shopping experiences that happen October, November, and December. When the community calls, we go. Uh, there's never a fee charged. If I'm asked to speak, I speak. If they want us to sell product, we box it up, we load it up, we haul it, we go. Um, and that enhances 
their community event. They're, they're trying also to um, do some fundraising for their own church by selling booth spaces, or they're trying to broaden their own um, clientele's knowledge globally. So we're a huge piece of that. When people come in and they ask you about some of what you have here, you're able to tell them, I imagine through stories and, and other examples of why it's valuable, where it's from, the, putting the meaning to the piece. Exactly, yeah. It, it is very much an educational experience shopping in a fair trade store, especially ours. Our staff is trained to always talk the country of origin what the material is made out of because we have so many amazing things made out of recycled something or other. Recycled magazine bowls, um, recycled bicycle chain frames, um, it, it, the list goes on and on. Um, oil drums that wash ashore in Haiti that are toxic the artisans take and hand draw intricate patterns on after they've burned off the Texas toxicity and then draw patterns and pound it out with a hammer and a chisel and make beautiful wall art. So coming is an educational experience. Um, it's also about seeing what uh, someone's hands can create because our artisans are creating um, out of need, they want to be able to feed their families. They want to be able to craft a product that will sell. But if they sell it in their own community, the value is very little. Because if they knit finger puppets in Peru, their neighbor knits finger puppets. And so does the next neighbor. It's a passed down craft or skill that they've all learned generation after generation. So the price on that finger puppet, very, very low. But if we bring that craft to a better marketplace here in the United States or bring it to Europe, um, we're able to get a higher price for the artisans. And those of us that are committed with the Fair Trade Federation, um, we're guaranteeing that artisan a much higher percentage. Our range is between about 28 and 40 percent that the artisan receives of the retail price. Shopping elsewhere, they're only receiving about one to two percent. Big difference, yeah. By doing fair trade business locally here, mm -hmm. not only are you helping this locality, but you're helping that locality. Yes, where the artisan is from. That, that's it's a win-win. It's a win-win, and the person who purchases the gift or item for themselves, they're a happy customer. They have something authentic, handmade, nothing done in a factory or assembly line fashion. Uh, they can buy a clothing garment where one person not only hand sewed the garment or machine stitched the garment, they also cut the fabric out and often they even hand block printed the fabric by the old fashioned batik way where they carve into wood put the wood into an organic dye and stamp out the fabric. So we have that garment right here in the store where one person has done every single step. It's just a, an incredibly different way of thinking about clothing. One of our clothing groups has the motto, um, change the world by changing your clothes. We love that. Are you familiar with the triple bottom line? Um, Fair traders are all about um, triple bottom line. We kind of uh, refer to it as people first, planet second, and profit third. Um, our practices that the artisans uh, are involved with must be sustainable. They cannot cut a tree down to make a product out of wood. We have many things made out of wood, so it's done from the either naturally fallen branches of the tree or in olive wood, which we have a, a large line of olive wood from Kenya, uh, it's the prunings of the olive tree. The artisans will get those prunings, they'll pair it up with um, cow bone that they've gotten from behind the butchers in Kenya, and then they batik paint it to make it look really cool, 
and they pair that up so that's the handle is cow bone and the rest of the utensil will be the olive wood. Um, so yes, triple bottom line is what fair traders are very much involved with. The people piece, clearly getting them a higher price, but it's also about respecting their heritage, respecting that this traditional craft has been passed down generation after generation, and that there's still a demand out there in the world for it. It's not something that they have to discard and go learn how to, I don't know, make tires for a car, you know. They can still, we can preserve that heritage. What is Gale all about? Well, certainly supporting local businesses is what it's all about because it is starting to get a little frightening. As you see businesses closing in the community, uh, what's going to be left here? Um, I hope that this fair trade business can go on and on, be the sustainability that we want, have the sustainability that we want. Um, that's truly it. We can't just live in our homes and not interact. We can't just hide behind our computer screens and point and click and do all our shopping. Um, having a group in this store that interacts Maybe it's a group of college students that will come in at the same time that I have a group visiting from Madison, Wisconsin, which happened this weekend. And yet we start to play a singing bowl with the college students. And the group, the other group, 20 years, 30 years older, here's what we're doing. And they come back. And it's that interaction, that look on the people's faces, um, of experiencing something they haven't experienced before. That's what I want to continue. I've been in retail a long time. And the first time around, it was in a mall, traditional factory-made items. Um, now this is a whole new experience. And, and whether it's a bookstore or a coffee shop or a fair trade store, it's that life of the community that I would like to see carry on. And of course, because we're doing such great things globally, we know that will carry on, as long as we get that local support.